Hey there, it's Dylan from Eat Wild, and part of our uh, talk today is to talk about what type of rifle should you buy. So we talked about caliber, and we talked about whether or not we should go with a big old gun that can shoot everything, or one that's more specific to deer, that's more comfortable to shoot. Uh, another question that I deal with a lot is, you know, what rifle should I buy? Should I buy a used rifle? Uh, should I buy uh, the rifle that comes in a package for 400 bucks? Is that going to work for me? Uh, should I buy uh, something with the higher end that's going to be a couple thousand bucks plus a scope? Is it worth putting the money and the investment into it? So I just kind of want to walk through the different options that you have in general. And there's a spectrum of firearms that I own here. And, and I'll tell you about maybe why I bought them and what the value is. And hopefully it'll guide, help guide you guys uh, towards uh, maybe what rifle you might want to buy uh, as your first hunting rifle. So... Always one option and it is, is, to, is to have a used rifle. A lot of used rifles are likely going to be more of a classic style. So this, this is a, uh, an old Steyr that I, that I picked up many years ago. Um, and uh, this rifle is, gosh, it's probably old, as old as me. I think, it was, I think it was born in 1976. So it's a 40-year-old rifle, but it's quite beautiful. It's got a wood stock and uh, it's got a lovely action on it. Uh, I really like this gun. However... The challenge with it is that it's it's a wood stock and, and it's also it's a blued barrel so I have to be careful not to uh, to uh, get this gun wet if I can avoid it and if I do get it wet I have to be able to dry it out I need to be able to keep the stock dry so it doesn't warp um, and I also need to keep the barrel dry as much as I can or at least be able to dry it off at the end of the day uh, so that it doesn't rust uh, when you're thinking about rifle you have to think about rifle care when you're going with an older rifle with a wood stock or a blued barrel a lot of folks, a lot of my friends have come, like they're, 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 they've had firearms passed down from their grandparents or their, from their parents, and they're often wood guns. Super effective for, for harvesting animals. You just have to take a little bit more care with them. So bring a little bit of oil with you, bring a, bring a rag to wipe them down at the end of every day. But again, super practical, and there's some great deals on used rifles out there, particularly some of those more uh, 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 common calibers such as .30-06 or the 308. You'll definitely be able to find them in some... Uh, older woodstock rifles. But the more of the workhorse type rifle, uh, is, this one is a Tika. Uh, this comes with a, uh, it's got a stainless steel barrel on this gun and it's got a synthetic, basically a plastic stock. So this gun, it's quite light because it's got this synthetic stock as well. Um, so what I like about this rifle, it's just a real workhorse for me. In fact, you can see the, the butt end here. <laughs> this has been chewed on by a horse actually, um, on one of my horse trips. Um, but nonetheless, it's a it's a super uh, light gun. It's a, it's great for backpacking. I use it for elk and, and sheep occasionally. This is a 300 Win Mag, so it's a fairly heavy barrel, but uh, it's very practical. And uh, they, these ones are priced around a thousand dollars. And with the stainless steel barrel and the synthetic stock, it's really a low maintenance type rifle. So that's the Tika T3. The really the only downside of this of this gun is uh, uh, some I find that the uh, the, it's got a clip on the on which I like or a magazine. The main drawback is that you can't top load the Tikas uh, with with ammunition down into the clip, which I find a bit uh, frustrating when I unload it. I want to reload it from the top. But anyways, super great rifle. It's it's very accurate. Uh, had it for 15 years and never had a problem and put it through all kinds of misery for sure. The next option is stepping up into something like a Seiko uh, or um, one of the higher end rifles. They're a little bit more expensive, but they offer a few more um, options for, for the hunter. Um, in this case, this is a seven millimeter weight Seiko Finlight. This is designed as a mountain rifle. It's also designed as a very durable, lightweight rifle. It's got the synthetic stock, which is, doesn't need any maintenance. You can beat it up quite a bit. And then it's got a stainless steel barrel, which is, of course, doesn't need the maintenance as well. As well. It's a fairly short barrel as well, which is which is nice for backpacking, keeps the weight down. With this particular gun, I can top load the magazine, unlike the Tika, which is a frustration for me. So I really do like the configuration of this, this rifle, a uh, very compact uh, gun, which adds to the overall um, lightness of the rifle. So I really enjoy, I really like this gun. It's very pleasant to shoot. It's got a lovely action on it. But on the other hand, it retails for a little over $2,000 for, for this gun before you start talking about the scope. So it's a little bit out of reach unless unless it's something that you're you know going to spend a lot of time using. That's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum, which 
I've got a lot of good things to say about is the, um, this is a, uh, a Savage Axis. Uh, this, this comes as a package and I think I paid $450 for it. It comes with a scope, with, with uh, scope mounts. This, this gun here, this is a 243. This has been an amazing little gun. I use it regularly for the Eat Wild Shooting Skills workshops. Um, I lend it out to my, my, my brother who shot a, uh, several deer with this as well as my cousin and a number of friends have borrowed this gun to shoot their first deer. Um, it's been super effective. Um, the main deterrence of this gun is the, it's a bit of, got a bit of a sloppy action which, which doesn't seem to make a difference when it comes to actually shooting the gun. Um, and it's got a, uh, it's got a blue or actually got a, like a black barrel here that's not, uh, it's not stainless steel. You still have to maintain it, keep it dry. It's got, it's got a plastic stock on it, but it's not quite as nice to the touch as some of the other um, options you have in the synthetic stock category. But again, for 450 bucks, this gun is going to take you a long way to, uh, you know, successfully harvesting animals every year, if that's your goal. Um, the only, the rain limitation is it's just not that pretty to look at. So, um... At the end of the day, super good value, and I, I would suggest that uh, if, you're, if you're looking for uh, to get uh, get into the market uh, for under 500 bucks, it's, it's a great option. You can probably get into the market in the in the used market for around 500 bucks as well with a scope and, a, and an older uh, Browning or Ruger rifle. You'll find those on the market; fairly, they're fairly common. The Tikas are about 800 bucks to a thousand bucks, and then a Seiko is uh, up around two thousand dollars. Anyway, there's some thoughts on. Uh, on a spectrum of rifles and hopefully that helps you make a decision about you buying your first rifle. I um, hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to like it, be sure to share it and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, if you can, if you're up here in the in British Columbia, come join us for one of our Eat Wild workshops. We'll see you next time.